Mountains, Mike, and we're in East Chicago, Indiana, at the site of the First National Bank of Trust, where John Nilger made his first mistake on January 15th, 1934. Now his gang made off with $20,000 in cash, and then they made their way to Arizona, where they were caught. Unfortunately, after numerous attempts to save the bank, it was torn down a few years ago to make way for this new Walgreens. So after the robbery in Chicago, John Dillinger and his gang were extradited back to Lake County, Indiana to stand trial for the murder as well as the bank robbery. They decided to house him here in Crumpton, Indiana, which at the time they said it was unescapable. And of course, John Dillinger proved them wrong. Dillinger was put in the custody of Sheriff Lillian Holly. She boasted that she could keep him, and he boasted she couldn't. This didn't prevent the amazing happy family picture in which Prosecutor Estill, who said he was confident that Dillinger would get the chair, and the sheriff posed with Dillinger in apparently affectionate intimacy. So the news footage I watched, they show this door here, which I believe leads to the kitchen, and there was a railing uh, where the cinder blocks are at one point. The news footage shows that basically they went this way. Went out the kitchen, down the stairs, and they followed this path. And where that gate sat, um, his, one of the guys that broke out with them went over the gate. And it looks like there was some kind of window or door there at one point, or maybe even right here. And they said he went through a parking garage, which was unlocked and unguarded at the time. And on the back side of this building of the jail, there's actually a door that kind of looks like news footage. And I'm thinking that's where the police garage was at. He went through and met his partner that he broke out with, which is the name of Young Blood. March 3rd at 8.30 in the morning, armed with his wooden toy pistol, and walked out. Through this kitchen and out the side entrance, unmolested and unhurried, the trio went. At the high backyard gate, Young Blood clambered over to survey the street beyond while the more leisurely Mr. Dillinger and his companion strolled through the police garage, which seems to have been unlocked and unguarded. So this here is the gate that Youngblood jumped over and met Dillinger. And as you see, this doorway kind of matches up to the newsreel footage that I found. And I believe this is the door, or the garage door, that he came out of on his way to freedom. And now it's actually storage, I believe. For the restaurant next door as you can see there's a lot of stuff in there but it's kind of cool looking shame you can't go inside and so what i think is he was trying to find a car or something to drive off of obviously and so he went to the police garage and obviously he's not gonna steal a police car because you know it's got police on it and so he's trying to find something else to drive off with which caused the fbi to come after him in the end so as he came out of the, the garage behind me here, he basically went looking for a car. So Dillinger with Lungblood and his two captives made their way basically around the block. Now obviously the bowling alley was not here. And I believe there might have been houses here at one point. And so he basically went across the street. So after they walked around the block, they basically essentially came back to where they broke out of jail. Next door to the, the criminal court was a auto shop. It was called the Main Street Garage, where they went in and stole a car. So let's go check that out. Unfortunately, it's no longer a, the Main Street Garage anymore. It's actually a uh, local business. But on the back side, they kind of have the the look of the place still, so I'm gonna show you that. So this building here was the Main Street Garage. It's actually actually the back side of it. On the front side is a little different. They have an awning and that kind of stuff. And so it doesn't look like this, but they essentially came in the back way, kind of where those doors were at, I'm thinking. And I'm thinking there was a garage there. If we get a little closer, you see if we get closer, you can see the ramp, but also the brick is a lot different. And that was where the garage door was at. So they walked through these doors and they found a car that they would like. It was a V8, which Dillinger preferred. 
so the car I'm taking out of the Main Street garage here was actually owned by Sheriff Lillian and they actually kidnapped the mechanic as well and they let him go somewhere along the route to Chicago and in fact the mechanic uh, that they kidnapped actually gave an interview about his experience as well how did he act was he jolly yes he sang part of the way what did he sing little dog get along little dog get along <laughs> that's so now the jail here was actually connected at one point and there was a building where that fence is at and basically there was a walkway and old footage and old photos I found where there was a door at least I can find it here there's a door if you look right there kind of like there's a weird looking window that's a door there's a door there and there was a door over here on the other side you can see it because it's got a frame around it actually and it kind of sticks out so this door frame right there so these two buildings were connected because the building next to the jail is actually the criminal court and so it was easier to basically bring prisoners in through the jail and back and forth between the courthouse and the jail without having to go outside now in the movie Public Enemies they show Johnny Depp's John Dillinger coming down this alleyway down walking in uh, it's winding up just enough to basically back a car in and get that shot of him leaving He wouldn't come out this way. You know, he's basically two buildings down, and the front of the Mainster garage actually had garage doors, and he more likely came out that way, which I'll show you here in a second. So, like I was saying, the next to the courthouse was the the garage that he came out of, and I'll show you that. What they basically changed it. You to see there is no garage. It looks like a normal building. You would never know this was a garage at one point. So as he came out of the Main Street garage here next to the courthouse, which is next to the jail, he turned and went this way down Main Street and turned left onto Joliet. So he turned off of Main Street here and onto Joliet and made his way out of Crump Point, Indiana on his way to Public Enemy Number 1. So, I want to thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later on down the road.